Alrighty, so welcome back. And today we are going to be going over a very cool section. Um, we're going to learn how to solve a lot of differential equations in about 20 seconds, um, which is, <laughs> this is the fastest technique that I've ever seen to solve a DE. And once you say this, you're going to wonder why in the world we haven't shown you this before, but that's okay. A lot of times we have to learn the, the hard way first, but we're going to first knock out the homework that we had from the previous section. Uh, so let's see, that was from section, was it 4.2? And we had numbers 1 and 3, so number 1. Number 1, we had y double prime minus 4y prime. Plus 4y equals 0. Okay? And we were given that one of the solutions, y sub 1, is equal to e to the 2x. Okay? Now we're going to use that reduction of order method in order to find y2. So we're going to start off, we're going to say y2 is equal to some function u times y sub 1. And in this case, our y sub 1 is this, so we're going to say that our y2, which I'm just call y for it now, is equal to u times e to the 2x. Okay? So if that's the case, then y prime is going to equal, well, first times derivative of the second, so 2u e to the 2x plus the second times derivative of the first, u prime times e to the 2x. And that is our first derivative right here. Okay, then we go to the second derivative, so y double prime. And so that's going to be 2 times, well, u times e to the 2x is what we've already done, so I can write that down. 2u e to the 2x, it's supposed to be an e, I promise, plus u prime e to the 2x. Okay. So that was the derivative of this first piece. The derivative of this piece is going to be the first times derivative of the second. So 2 u prime e to the 2x plus second times derivative of the first plus u double prime e to the 2x. So I'm going to multiply all that out. I'm going to get y double prime is equal to, we'll have 4 u e to the 2x. Then we're going to have positive 2u prime e to the 2x, and then plus, oh wow, well, I was hoping something canceled, it didn't, that's okay, plus 4u prime, yeah, that's correct, e to the 2x, and then finally, plus u double prime e to the 2x, okay? So now I can set up my differential equation. I'm going to get y double prime, which is this right here. So 4u e to the 2x plus 4u prime e to the 2x plus u double prime e to the 2x. Okay, that was that. And then minus 4y, so minus 4 times y prime, which is 2u e to the 2x plus u prime e to the 2x, okay, plus 4 times y, plus 4 times y, which y is just u e to the 2x. Okay, Whew. a lot of work. So, <clears throat> and all that's equal to zero, right? Let's see what we have. Well, let's start with the u e to the 2x. So I've got 4 here, negative 8 here, and 4 more. It's positive 8, so these all cancel. Right? Alrighty. And now the u prime, I've got 4 u prime minus 4 u prime. These two are gone as well. So what does that leave me? Well, it leaves me with u double prime e to the 2x equals 0. And so my e to the 2x can never be 0, so this implies that u double prime is equal to 0. Okay, so 
now I'm going to do my reduction. I'm going to substitute in my W. So I'm going to get W prime, uh, where U, hold on, let me do this. U prime is equal to W, right? So let me make sure I just, that I did say that in the previous. Yeah, W is equal to U prime. Good. So um, this is W prime is equal to zero. And so if W prime is equal to zero, what does that mean W has to be? Well, the derivative of a W is a zero, so that means W itself has to be a constant. Okay? So now I'm going to have to clear this, unfortunately, move to the next page. So here we go. W is equal to a constant. And so I can now go backwards and say, well, W is U prime. So U prime is a constant. So now let's take the integral of all this. And so if I take the integral of this with respect to X for both sides, I wind up with U is equal to C1X plus C2. Alrighty. Now, Y, if you remember, was equal to U times EX, E to the X, uh, 2X, yeah, E to the 2X. Okay. And so all I do is now I'm going to send the E to the 2X through here, and I'm going to get Y is equal to c1 x e to the 2x plus c2 e to the 2x okay now this has to work for any cho any choice of constant so i'm going to say uh, let c1 equal 1 and c2 equal 0 uh, y2 that's what we've been solving for this whole time is equal to e no not e don't do that. X e to the 2x. Because this one's gone. That's a 0. So y2 is x e to the 2x. So let me box that. And now let me show an insane amount of enthusiasm. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm tired. That was as much as you're going to get today. Um, so what did we? What in the world did we just do? Well, we had that one of the solutions was y sub one is equal to e to the two x, and we just found that the other solution is not e to the negative two x, like you might have thought it would be. It's actually x times e to the two x. That is pretty cool. I would never ever have guessed this. But by using the reduction order, we're able to pop out the second solution, and we can store that in our memory banks. There are some times where if you have one of your solutions is an exponential, the other solution is x times that exponential. That is very good knowledge to have. Alrighty. So that was number one. Now let's knock out number three. And number three was very similar to number five, except it's normal tree functions instead of hyperbolic. So let's clear this and knock that out. Alrighty, so five, no, not five, three. This was talking about five, but we're actually working on three. So three, we have y double prime plus 16y equals zero. And we're given that y sub 1 is equal to cosine 4x. And yes, our, I know you already know what the second solution has to be, but let's actually go through the math. It is very, very, very similar to what number 5 was. So here we go. We're going to start off by saying y2 is some function u times y1, which in this case would be y2 is equal to u times cosine 4x. Okay? So that's what we're going to start with. So y is equal to u times cosine 4x. That means y prime, when the first times derivative of the second, so is equal to negative 4u 
cosine 4x. Uh, not cosine, sine, right? Mm -mm -mm. Sine. Okay. And then plus second times derivative of the first, you prime cosine 4x. Okay, that's my, my y prime. Now I need my double prime. So the y double prime is going to be negative 4 times, well, it's derivative of this. First times derivative of the second, so that's going to be 4u cosine 4x, and then plus second times derivative of the first, u prime times sine 4x. Okay, that's the first piece. Now we have to do this one, plus first times derivative of the second, which is going to wind up a minus sign right here, right? Minus 4u prime sine 4x, and then second times derivative of the first, u double prime cosine 4 x. Alrighty, so let's see, I'm going to distribute this, so y double prime is equal to negative 16u cosine 4x uh, minus 4u prime sine 4x minus 4u prime sine 4x plus u double prime cosine 4x. All right, so, wow, that's a lot. Does anything simplify or combine? Eh, we can combine that to make it y double prime is equal to negative 16u times cosine 4x minus 8u prime sine 4x plus u double prime cosine 4x. Alrighty. So now that we have this done, we can set up our equation up top. So y double prime is going to be this. So negative 16u cosine 4x minus 8u prime sine 4x plus u double prime cosine 4x. That takes care of the y double prime plus 16 times y. So plus 16 times y is u cosine 4x, and then that should equal 0. Alrighty, so let's start with u's. Negative 16u cosine 4x, positive 16u cosine 4x gone. And, well, the rest is what we have. We can't do anything else with this, so I'm going to bring it down, but I'm going to put my u prime first, so it's going to look kind of strange. I'm going to have u double prime cosine 4x minus 8u prime sine 4x equals 0. Alrighty, so first things first, I need to uh, get u double prime by itself. So I'm going to divide every term by cosine 4x. Let's see what I'll get. I'll get u double prime minus 8 u prime sine 4x over cosine 4x is tan 4x and then that is equal to 0. Okay, we're almost there. So this this right here this 8 tan 4x okay I wish, let me rewrite that. I'm going to shift that u to the front where I can make sure I have that. So u prime times 8 tan 4x. So negative 8 tan 4x is going to be my p of x, right? This is a second order linear. Oh, I forgot to do one thing. I can't do the second order linear with the integration factor. I've got to change it to a first order, hence the reduction of order. Hello. So I'm going to make w is equal to u prime. So this is going to be right here, w prime minus w 
times 8 tan 4x equals 0. All right, so now my p of x, let me actually just rewrite this so clear this so we can actually see what's going on. So I'll, let me rewrite it one more time. I have uh, w prime minus, I'll even do it all, 8 tan 4x w equals 0. That makes it a little bit easier. That means this 8 tan 4x is my p of x and 0 is my f of x. Alrighty, so now I can use the integrating factor. I've got um, the integral of p of x dx. Well, the integral of negative 8 tan 4x dx. Well, it's not one that I know off the top of my head, but luckily I just did one of them. So I'm, I actually am, uh, when we did number five, I sort of remember this. Turns out this is going to be two natural log cosine 4x right here. Alrighty, which I can use property of logs now. And so that's going to equal natural log of cosine 4x quantity squared. Okay, now mu is equal to what? e to the integral of p of x dx, which we've already done. So it's going to equal e to the natural log of cosine squared 4x, if you will. Okay, they're going, they're inverses, so mu is going to equal cosine squared 4x. Not bad, not bad at all. Okay, so now that I've got it in this form, I can solve out. So my w is going to equal, well, what do I have? I've got 1 over cosine squared 4x times the integral of cosine squared 4x times f of x which is zero, okay? So I'm gonna swing this over and get W times cosine squared, oops, let me not change that like that. Try this again. Uh, you know what? No, I'll do it just like that. That's fine. Cosine or X quantity squared like that, it's going to be a little bit easier, is equal to the integral of zero. Okay, so when I differentiate this, what, how do I get a zero? Well, I get a zero if what I, how to say this, when I integrate, <laughs> this is hard to say, the integral of zero really means what did I differentiate to get zero, and that means it's a constant. So I can say that w times uh, cosine 4x squared is c1, okay? But I can now say that is w is equal to um, u prime. So I can now say uh, u prime is equal to c1 times Cosine of, I could sense that'd be dangerous. Cosine of 4x to the negative second power. Alrighty. Now, I've got it set up like that. I can now take the integral. And I won't be able to do this integral in the form that it's in because I don't know what that is. But, if I rewrite it, I get the integral of u prime is equal to, this is going to be c1 integral of 1 over cosine 4x quantity squared dx. Well, 1 over cosine is what? Secant. Exactly. Worst arrow ever. So here we go. Integral u prime is now going to equal c1 times the integral of secant squared 
x dx. And I can do that one. What do I differentiate to get secant squared? Tan, exactly. So u is going to equal c1 tan 4x plus c2. Okay, so almost there. Let me clear this. So u is equal to c1 tan 4x plus c2. Okay, so y2 was equal to u times y1, which was cosine 4x. So y2 is equal to cosine 4x. So I'll have c1 uh, tan 4x times cosine 4x plus c2 times cosine 4x, but I can make my c1 and c2 anything I want. I'm going to let c1 equal 1 and c2 equal 0. That'll drop that out. And then I'm just going to be left with tan x times cosine 4x. Well, tan is sine over cosine times cosine, just leave sine. So y2 equals sine 4x. Whew. I have a lot of work to get to where I already knew we were going to wind up, but that's okay. <laughs> Hopefully the reduction of order sings to you at least a little bit. So whew, let's clear this and jump into the fun part today. So here we go. Okay, so this is a lecture where we learn how to solve a lot of the differential equations in 20 seconds or less. Um, and in case you do the math jeopardy, or anything like that, you're going to see some like this more than likely, that if you know how to do it, it's a 20-second solve. If you don't, well, you're stuck. So let's start off with talking about solving a first-order differential equation. So we're going to say it's ay prime plus by equals 0. And by the way, what we're doing today, the constant coefficients require the linear equation to be homogeneous. So it has to be equal to zero to do the 20 second solve. If it's not, you're out of luck. So, but on the bright side, even if it is non-homogeneous, as we've already seen in the theory, you're going to solve the, homo the associated homogeneous equation. So you're going to get practice solving the, these no matter what. If it's homogeneous, you solve it. If it's non-homogeneous, you still solve it. So you will always solve a homogeneous equation. Oh, here we go. Let's say we have this, this linear first order and we want to uh, solve it. So just looking at it, you can imagine if I moved my, uh, if I solve for y prime, let's see, I'd have a y prime is equal to negative b y, divide both sides by a, I'm gonna get y prime is equal to negative b over a y. Okay? And what I'm going to do, this is kind of, um, uh, how to say this? What I'm about to do is go backwards. <laughs> like, you're going to see this pop up again, but I'm going to say that this negative b over m, and b over a is some constant m, okay? So y prime is equal to some m times y. Alrighty. Now, the only way I can get y prime equal to some constant times y is if y takes the form of an exponential. So y in this case has to be e to the mx. That's the only way that that holds, right? which we already knew by just looking at it up here. It has to be something like that. Otherwise, we're going to want, we're run into problems with, uh, because exponentials are one of the good guys when you talk about adding or subtracting the first derivative from the original. So that's when you get your zero. But anyways, forget all that. We have y is equal to e to the mx, so m is a constant. And so um, that means that y prime is going to be m 
e to the mx. Would you agree? Well, sure you would. So I'm now going to rewrite this equation up top, and I'm going to have a times m e to the mx plus b times e to the mx equals zero, right? So I'm now going to factor out an e to the mx, so e to the mx times a m plus b equals zero. Well, e to the mx can never equal zero, so that means a m plus b must equal to zero. So a m plus b has to equal zero, which means m is equal to negative b over a. Okay? So, like I said, you're going to see it. We saw it again. But this is a more formalized solution. This actually sings to me more than just doing that little solve up there. Now, what does this mean? This means that e to the negative b over a is a solution. Okay, if I have a linear set, set up like this. So as an example, let's say I have 2y prime plus 5y equals 0. Okay, so I've got, I know that this right here is my a, this is my b, so I know that m is going to equal negative 5 over 2. So my solution is y equals e to the negative 5 halves x. Okay, now that is actually not totally surprising. <laughs> we call it if I set, divide everything by 2, I would have had a 5 halves here. So I, when I took the, the differential, it would had to it would be negative five halves that I could add to the plus five halves and then have cancellation. But that is still a nice little result that this is the solution to that one without doing any work other than my b over my a and the negative sign. And if you really want me to solve it, y prime is going to equal negative five halves e to the negative five halves x. So 2 times negative 5 halves e to the negative 5 halves x plus 5 times e to the negative 5 halves x should equal 0, does it? Well, the 2's are going to cancel, and we'll have negative 5 e to the negative 5x plus 5 e to the negative 5 halves x. Check. That is the solution. So... That's how we found it. We went through this kind of process right here, this formal process, and we figured out that the um, solution had to be of the form y is equal to e to the negative b over a x. Boom. So that's the first one. Now, let's clear the screen if it would work. Thank you. Okay. Now, Let's look at a second order, okay? A y double prime plus b y prime plus c y equals zero, okay? So using the exact same method above where I have e to the m x, I can now say if I take the second derivative and multiply by a, I'm going to have a m squared e to the m x plus b times m e to the m x plus c times e to the m x equals zero, right? And that's not too bad. Now, I have this thing, if I factor out e to the mx, what am I left with? I 
have a quadratic. Because this can never equal zero, so that means this has to equal to zero. And I can solve that using quadratic formula. So m must equal negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, all of that over 2a. All right. Pretty cool. So what does that mean? Well, that means I have two solutions, right? I have m1 is equal to negative b plus root b squared minus 4ac over 2a, and m2 equals negative b minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay? So I have my two solutions here. Now, before I get into the nitty gritty of this, uh, let me ask you a question about quadratics in general. What form do their solutions always take? Okay? They always take, if I have a quadratic, one of three forms. Number one, two real solutions. Number two, one repeated real solution. Three, two imaginary solutions. Right? Y'all remember doing all that? Where you have, you have your, actually, I'm going to do it this way. I have a quadratic. It either looks like this. Or I have two real solutions here and here, or it looks like this, or it just touches the x-axis. So I have one repeated real solution, or it does this, in which case I have two imaginary solutions. So we've got this right, right here. We know it's one of these three cases. So if I have a second order linear uh, with differential equation with constant coefficients, the, uh, how to say this, the associated factored form, this form right here is either going to have two real solutions, one repeated real solution, or two imaginary solutions, okay? All right, if, you, if you're good with me up to that point, let me show you how this works. Clear this. All righty. First one, two real solutions. Okay. The two, if you have two real solutions, when do you have two real solutions? First off, before I jump the gun. Well, that's if you have negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac over zero. Well, wouldn't that be funny? You didn't say that. Over 2a. Do you remember this guy right here tells you which one you have? If b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero, you have two real solutions. Okay? So, two real solutions. If you have that, you have the following. y1 is equal to e to the m1x, y2 is equal to e to the m2x. Okay? So when I solve the quadratic, the first solution is the m1, the second solution is m2. Okay? So with this in mind, I can now write the linear combination and you form the fundamental set of y equals c1 times the first solution e to the m1x plus c2 times the second solution e to the m2x. Okay? Now, I'm going to do a quick example. I think you'll like it. Let's see. So here's the example. 
I have 2 y double prime minus 5 y prime minus 3 y equals 0. Okay? So if I go through that whole long process, I'm going to wind up with something called the auxiliary equation, which I will sometimes say, sometimes I will forget. But I like to call it the M equation, where I wind up with 2m squared minus 5m minus 3. That was using that whole process from before where we factored out the um, exponential and we're left with this piece was equal to 0. So that piece is equal to 0, and I can solve that. That's not too bad, right? That's 2m plus 1 times m minus 3. That's how that factors. Okay? So m1 is equal to negative 1 half. m2 is equal to 3. Okay? So my final solution is y equals c1 e to the negative 1 half x plus c2 e to the 3x. <laughs> That's it. That's the solution to this equation. It's literally just a few steps. And if you can factor that in your head, you don't need to do any of this. You can just say, well, let's see. It's going to be y is 1 half and negative 1 half and y is positive 3. And you're done. Alrighty. So not too bad, right? Okay, that was with two real solutions. So not, not too bad. Let me clear this and we'll go to one repeated solution. Okay, so repeated solutions. Let's say I had as an example. I'm not going to show you the, the whole derivation of this. I'm just going to jump straight in. Okay, so y double prime minus 10 y prime plus 25y equals 0. Well, that sets up to be m squared minus 10m plus 25 equals 0, which is m minus 5 quantity squared equals 0. So this is a repeated solution. So this, is, By the way, this is number 2 out of that those things. All this is number 2. So I have a repeated real solution. So what is my final form going to say? Well, the final form is going to be y equals c1 times e to the 5x, because m equals 5, right? Plus c2. Now, I'm going to pause here for a second. I need a solution, a second solution. It has to have a second solution, right? This is a second order, and it has to have a second real solution. And I can tell you it is not e to the negative 5x because e to the negative 5x is not up here. If it had been e to the negative 5x, you would have wound up with, that would have been if you had m squared minus 25 is 0 then you would have had m is equal to positive 5 and m is equal to negative 5. But that is not what we had. We had a repeated solution of m equals 5. So how do we get around that? Instead of e to the 5x, it's x e to the 5x. And that's it. If it's a repeated solution, the first one is the e to the mx. The second one is x e to the mx. And that's the solution. <laughs> oh gosh, I hope that is as satisfying to you as it is to me. Um, now, if you remember, we actually did this problem in the homework for the last section, the very first problem. We had the first solution was, what was that, e to the 2x, and then we found that the y2 was x times the e to the 2x. 
Well, here you go. There's the same type of situation coming up here. It was exactly like this, by the way. It was a y double prime minus 4y prime plus 4 equals 0, and we were given that y1 is equal to e to the 2x. Well, now that I know this method, this is m squared minus 4m plus 4 equals 0, which is just m minus 2 squared equals 0, which means one of my solutions is e to the 2x. The other solution is x e to the 2x, which is exactly what we found. But instead of taking 30 seconds, we spent 10 minutes on it because it was reduction of work. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's okay, though. So, so far, so good. Now we get to do the two imaginary roots. So let's knock those out. Okay, bear with me. If, so this is that case number three where we had two imaginary solutions. All right, so I'm not going to call them imaginary. I'm going to call them two complex solutions because reasons. I just don't like using the word imaginary to be honest. It bugs me. So if I have the case where b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, did I say that right the last time? I hope I did. Then it's, it goes imaginary because this is under a root, right? So that's when we're going to have two complex solutions. Uh, b squared minus 4ac greater than 0, you have two real. b squared minus 4ac equals to 0, you have one real repeated. And then if it's b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, you've got this, these two complex solutions. So I'm going to write them as two complex numbers. So m1 is going to equal alpha plus i beta and m2 is going to equal alpha minus i beta, okay? So those are two complex solutions. That means that y is going to equal c1 times e to the alpha minus i beta x plus c2 times e to the alpha, that was a plus, wasn't it, plus minus i beta x. Okay, so I just wrote it out like that. Now, I'm going to use Euler's formula. So Euler's formula, which we'll use for forever, is that e to the i theta is equal to what? Cosine theta plus I sine theta, right? Okay. So now I'm going to write these exponentials as sines and cosines. So if you look at this, I could say that this is E to the alpha X times E to the I beta x, right? Because we just add the exponents. So I'm going to say that e to the i beta x is going to equal cosine beta x plus i sine beta x using Euler's formula. Okay. Now for this one, it's going to be e to the alpha x times e to the negative i beta x, right? So e to the negative i beta x is going to equal, well, it's still going to be cosine beta x because cosine of negative beta x is the same as cosine of positive beta x because it's a cosine function, which is even. So to write that out, cosine of negative beta x is the same thing as cosine of positive beta x, simply because it's an even function. So cosine beta x, 
but now the sine is odd, so I move the negative sine to the outside, so minus sine beta x, okay, oops, forgot my i, i sine beta x, okay, so I've got these two expressions right here, now if I add them together, I get e to the i beta x plus e to the negative i beta x, that's going to equal, well, cosines are going to be fine, but the i sines are going to cancel. So it's going to be 2 cosine beta x. Okay? And if I subtract them, if I do e to the i beta x minus e to the negative i beta x, I'm going to get 2i sine beta x. Okay? Whew. Alrighty, so here we go. So I can now do a rewrite. What I have, let's see, where is it? I've lost my place. Ah, oh, there we go. So y1 is equal to e to the alpha x times cosine, that's not cosine, my gosh, if I have good sense, I'll be dangerous, times ah, e to the i beta x plus e to the negative i beta x. Okay. Now, where did this come from? So this y1 is equal, I'll put a little one right here and then erase it in a sec, to this, okay, where I've got e to the alpha x times e to the ibx, which is what I would get right here, plus e to the alpha x minus i beta x. So, this is one solution right here where I'm adding these two. Okay. Now, another solution would be y2 would be subtracting them. So e to the alpha x times e to the i beta x minus e to the negative i beta x. Okay, so I just made a different combination with a negative in front here. So those are going to be my, if I had an equal sign here, that would be good. Those will be my two solutions. Let me erase that one so I don't get confused. Now, luckily we have this right here. So this substitutes directly for this. So now I'm going to have an expression for y1, and this substitute directly for this. So I'm going to have a, an expression for y2. So now if I go, I wish I had room to do this. Actually, I can probably fit it right up here. Let me erase this a little bit. Larger brush size to erase quickly. All right, this is all scratch work anyways, right? We didn't need any of that. All right, so now I can actually... I'll have a little bit of room. So that means that y1 is going to equal to, well, e to the alpha x times 2 cosine beta x, okay? And then y2 is going to equal e to the alpha x times 2i sine beta x. Okay? Now, my y1 and y2, the pieces that I, let me actually write this in slightly different form. I think I can get away with it right here. This is going to be 2e to the alpha x times cosine beta x, like that, 
and this is going to be, oh, this is going to be hard to squeeze in, 2i e to the alpha x times sine theta x. All right, here we go. Now, if I have a solution, a constant multiple of that solution is also a solution, right? That's some of the stuff that we did in theory. So a solution, uh, let me actually write that as a constant multiple of a solution equals a solution, okay? So I'm going to say that these coefficients right here, which are constant, are just also, they're a constant multiple of a solution, which means these are also solutions. So here we go. Final one. Y1 then is going to equal, we're going to have our E to the alpha x times cosine beta x m y2 is going to equal e to the alpha x times sine beta x. So these are our solutions and I can now, I think I can even fit this in. I hope. <laughs> Here we go. The general solution is y equals c1 e to the alpha x cosine beta x plus c2 e to the alpha x sine beta x. There we have it. Alrighty, this is our general solution for a two imaginary solutions when we do the b squared minus 4ac. So where did this alpha and this beta come from? Well, that came from, oh boy, right here. And that's when I solved out. So when I did my quadratic formula, I wound up with the final solution looking something like m equals something, oh, I'll call it alpha plus or minus some value beta, i beta. I should put that i there. That's where my alpha and my beta come from, okay? So as an example, let me clear this. Let's do, oh, let me find a good example. I don't want a bad one. Yeah, let's do that one. So as an example, how all this works for complex ones, y double prime plus 4y prime plus 7y equals 0. Okay, so this is going to give me m squared plus 4m plus 7 equals 0. So b squared minus 4ac, I can look really quickly, that's 16 minus 4 times 1 times 7, 28. That's definitely less than 0, so I'm going to have two imaginary solutions. So I'm going to set it up. m equals negative 4 plus or minus square root of 16 minus 28 over 2. So this is going to be negative 4 plus or minus square root of 16 minus 28 is going to be negative 12 over 2. So that is negative 4 plus or minus 2 root negative 3 over 2. The 2 will go into each of these and it will simplify into negative 2 plus or minus root 3 i. Okay, this is my alpha. This is my beta. So my solution looks like y equals 
C1 times E to the negative 2x alpha times cosine of beta x root 3x plus C2 e to the negative 2x sine root 3x. Boom. This one is not a 20 second solve. This is a, a minute solve. But it's really that easy. Alrighty. So what, that is about it. We're going to work a few more examples. Just a few. Oh, this, is not, this is not a bad thing at all. And then we will call it. So let's clear this and finish up. Okay, let's do as an example uh, 4y double prime plus 4y prime plus 17y equals 0. Okay, I can look at that instantly, see that b squared minus 4 times this times this is, is going to be negative. So I'm going to have imaginary solutions to this. So m is equal to negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c. So 4 times 4 is 16 times 17. Oh gosh, 256 plus 16, 272. 272. And then all of that over 2a, which is 8. Alrighty. So this is going to be negative 4 plus or minus root negative 2. 56 over 8, I can pull out a, let's see, 16, that's 16 squared, right? So that is just straight up negative 16, or sorry, not negative 16, forgive me, I didn't say that. That's 16i over 8, which is going to equal negative 1 half plus or minus 2i, okay? This is my alpha, this is my beta, so I have y is equal to c1 times e to the negative one half x cosine 2x plus c2 e to the negative one half x sine 2x. Boom, just like that. Now, let's say that I gave you initial conditions to go with this. So let's say I had y at 0 is equal to negative 1, and y at y prime at 0 is equal to positive 2. Well, I would take this and use these initial conditions. So if I plug in a 0 for the x, y is equal to negative 1, so that's going to be the exponentials are going to be 1, so the only thing that's going to survive is C1, because it's going to be cosine of 0, which is a 1, and then there you go. C1 is 1. Alrighty. So what about the next one? Well, I've got to find y prime. So y prime is a series, it's a couple of products, right? Yeah. So here we go. Boy, y prime is going to be c1 first e to the negative one half x times derivative of the second uh, negative 2 sine 2x plus the second times derivative of the first whoops will be a negative right negative one half e to the negative one half x cosine 2x, something like that. Alrighty, and so plus, this is C, I should do it like that, shouldn't I? Yeah, C2, we're going to have first e to the negative one half x times derivative of the second, 2 cosine 2x plus second times derivative of the first, again minus. And a smaller so minus uh, one half e to the negative one half x sine 
do it. Okay. So my y prime at zero is two, so two is equal to um, c1 is a negative one. So let's see what survives. Sine of zero is gone, so this term is going to be gone. And this one will survive, so it'll be a negative one times negative one half, so that's plus one half. Okay, and that's that one. And then let's see. C2, this term goes to zero, and I'm left with that's going to be a one. That'll be a one, so two C2. So what y'all get? Something like that. So C2, well, when I move it over, I'm going to have uh, three halves is equal to 2c2, c2 is equal to 3 fourths. So my final solution is y is equal to negative e to the negative 1 half x cosine 2x plus 3 fourths e to the negative 1 half x sine 2x. Boom. Just like that. Not bad, right? All right. So here is kind of a, a cool little twist to this. This technique doesn't stop at first order and second order. We can go all the way down. So let's take a little look at those. Let me clear this. Let's say that I have y triple prime plus 3 y double prime minus 4y equals 0. Well, what does this look like? This looks like m cubed plus 3m squared minus 4 equals 0. Okay, I can look right here and see if m is 1, this works. So m equals 1 is a solution. All right. So if m and 1 is a solution, I can figure out what's left if I factor out m equals 1. So I do polynomial long division, m cubed plus 3m squared plus 0m, always have to do a placeholder, minus 4. So I look just at the leftmost terms. So m versus m cubed, m squared. So m squared times m is m cubed m squared times negative 1 is minus m squared, and that's going to be 3 minus negative 1 is going to be 4m squared, and then I bring down the next term, plus 0m. So look at these terms. I multiply by 4m, so 4m times m is 4m squared. 4m times negative 1 is minus 4m. Subtract off. I get positive 4m. Bring the next term down, minus 4, and so that's just plus 4, right? 4m minus 4, yep. So this is what's left. Now, how do I factor m squared plus 4m plus 4? Well, that's just m plus 2 squared. So my solution is going to look like the first solution is m equals 1, so y is equal to e to the 1x, oh, forgot my c, hold on, c1 e to the 1x plus c2 e to the negative 2x plus c3 x times e to the negative 2x. And this is your solution to the third order. <laughs> oh, isn't that amazing? I, I I hope you like that as much as I do. That just makes me insanely happy. So, as long as you have constant coefficients and it is homogeneous, this is the way you solve them. Don't ever use another technique. Oh, let, oh I didn't say that. Um, <laughs> there are other techniques um, that are worth working with. 
it's just this is a really fast way to solve them. Alrighty, so for your homework, if you will, let's go homework. And this is going to be from section 4.3. Knock out the following. Oh, let me see. I want to make sure all of them are good. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay, yeah. It's going to seem like a lot, but most of these are 30 second solves. So, one, three, five, nine, eleven, fifteen. 24 and 33 and let's star oh gosh um 5 24 and 33 but do them all they're really fast so have fun and i will see you later stay safe bye bye